Hey everybody, welcome to day three of uh, Android Kotlin Bootcamp. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about data model and the data class in Kotlin, so let's get started. So a lot of times, maybe in Java, you might have a recycler view, which is a list of data, and you want to display, say, a list of 50 users or 50 emails or 50 recipes or... 25 whatever like you have a list of something and a lot of times what you do is you'd create an array list and you usually have a model so you have so first of all you have your recycler view which is kind of a list of data and then you would have your model which would be like user or in uh invoice or email or whatever and then um, you, you could set up your recycler view like that but today we're going to talk about the data model so what exactly is the data model or, or the data class well let's see what problem it solves so first of all say we want a list of users so we have uh, if we go up to here uh, we can do val well you in this case we'll do what should we do we'll do invoices so say you're making some kind of uh, invoicing content management app and you want to be able to have invoices where every week you send an invoice to a customer or whatever so invoices equals and then in uh, then in Java you could do array list uh, string or whatever but actually in Colin we can do this array list of uh, then we can give it a type so we'll call this invoice. Actually, I should have done you something else, but anyways. So what this is saying is, hey, we have a variable. It's going to be called invoices, and that can be anything. I just named it invoices because but this could be emails or anything else. And then we have an array list of something. So we have a list of something. What is in the side of this list? A bunch of invoices. So invoices for January, February, March, all the way to December, from 2014 to 2015 to 2016 or whatever. We have a list of invoices. So right now it's given us an error because we don't we actually don't have invoices class created yet. So I'm gonna go over to the left side in project and make sure I'm in Android view, and then I'm gonna open up app Java. And then the first folder here and we'll make a new class you can right click and go new uh, Kotlin class and we'll call this one invoice uh, uh, invoice yeah in so this right here has to match that right there it can be anything but it just that right there has to match this and we'll go ahead and make it a class and click enter um, so here we go so we created our class um, and then, so what's going to go inside of our invoice? Maybe we have, uh, maybe we have a name, uh, 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 maybe we have a name equals, and then maybe we have uh, an email address, and maybe we have uh, pro uh, costs equals uh, 10, uh, maybe we have an address. So, nor so we have a list. So, so backing up a little bit, we have an array list of invoices. So this could be 100 invoices, or a thousand invoices, or three invoices. Um, but each invoice contains a name, an email, cost, and, a, and an address. So, how can we actually add stuff to this? Uh, in step to this invoice and we're not going to be playing with the UI yet that'll come a little bit later when we talk about recycler views in a couple of days but how do we actually create a data class so it's actually pretty easy so so we'll convert this class into a data class so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of that and instead of class we'll do data class so now it's asked given us an error we actually need to do that right there and then inside of here we need something so what do we need we can put just like we had we can put um, uh, first we'll, we'll just stick it easy we'll, we'll know we'll do first name string we'll do pr uh, cost e uh, uh, we'll do it and so what we're saying is hey each invoice is going to have a first name, which is a string, which is some text. Then it's going to have a cost, which could be $50 a month or whatever, whatever the service is. So we created our data class, and this is successfully working. So, but, so let's, let's forget about the list of, our, of it right now. Let's just talk about just the data class. So we have invoice here, so we can easily just type invoice, and it's prompting for me here. And I can do, I can put that there, and we have access to like cost first name and I think is that all we had cost and first name yeah so what we can also what we, what we can do is we can pass in the cost here so what is it asking for it's asking for a name so let's do Daniel Malone and then it's asking for a cost so we'll do 
forty dollar, fifty dollars, or whatever. That that'll work just fine. So we have a list of we have an invoice of Daniel Malone. So this is how you can create, uh, and uh, this is using this data class. So let's go ahead and go down a little bit, and let's actually assign this to a variable. So do um, val uh, Daniel equals, and there we go. So now what we can do is because we have this variable created called Daniel, we can do this. Daniel dot, and then we have access to cost, first name. So say we want to say we want to create a new create a email to send to customer. What we can do is inside of that email we can say hey um, uh, body equals, and then we can put in um, hey. So hey Daniel, your cost is Daniel dot cost. Um, and then you can go on with other stuff in the email, so just other text or whatever. So we're using, we're, so we're not using body right now. But the important part to note is, is that now that we have this Daniel variable, so we have Daniel, we ha can use it there and there. And all we need to do is put a dot and then the name of it. So first name right there. If we go back to our invoice, sure enough, there's our first name. And if we go to Daniel dot cost. Then we go back to invoice, we can say, hey, there's really a cost there. So how can, so just for fun, and we're not going to make the list quite yet, we could use a recycler view to drag that in there and make a list of users. And we'll do that in a little bit, or not in this video, but in a, in a, in a future video. But one of the things that we're going to do here is just go ahead and, um, and I mean, this will work for now. So we have invoices. So let's go ahead and do something. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And say we want to generate some random invoices. Maybe you're doing testing using Expresso and you need some tests or you're doing unit tests, whatever you're doing. So let's do this. Let's do, we know how to create loops. So it's with four. So I in 0, 25. So what this will do is it'll loop through anything inside of there 25 times. So I can type some text here and this text will be executed 25 times. So what do we want to put inside of here? Let's do this. Let's do val um, invoice equals invoice. And then we'll need a name. We'll call this Daniel. And then a cost. We'll make this $12. OK, cool. So first name. Um, so we have our invoice. But I, we're actually not using that variable yet. So let's go ahead and so, so first of all, just to explain, this right here is lots of invoices. This right here is just one invoice. So we want to add this invoice into the array list right here. So we can use the variable name invoices. So we can copy that invoices dot add and we can add we can add this invoice to it. So we'll copy that and put that invoice inside of there. So now this invoice list right here is getting a list of Daniel for twelve dollars and it's going to do that twenty five times. So everything inside of here will be executed twenty five times. So if I run this and the emulator changes because we actually haven't, we're not displaying that. We're not displaying the, uh, we're not uh, displaying the res uh, this invoices yet. We haven't displayed the invoices yet. But what we can do is we can go down here and we can do um, D, D, we'll call this testing, and then we'll put invoice uh, is, and then what we can, or we'll just do this. Let's do test. Um, probably, no, let's do invoice. Um, 22 and we can do dollar sign again to access the invoices there and we'll type invoices dot or we can do we can get number actually we need to do this we need to put those there and we'll do invoices dot uh, we'll do uh, 22 so this should be valid I'm gonna go ahead and run it and if I open up the emulator you should see no changes but when I open up the log cat and search for test and we have an invoice of, oh, okay, well, we actually didn't, uh, I forgot to do something. But you can see, hey, testing, so testing right there, testing is showing up right there. And we have invoice number 22, which comes from right there. And then we're getting first name of Daniel and cost of 12. So in this case, let's just get first name. So let's do this, first name. So Daniel, so we're getting the invoice from invoice, from invoice, from the list of invoices, get number 22 and get the first name. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And then we should see 
uh, nothing, no changes there. But but if you look down at the log cat, so at the log cat at the bottom, we see, hey, it's Daniel. So let's do something just to make a difference. So all of these are Daniel, but let's actually change it to something else. So we have the variable i there, and i is going to start at zero, and every time it executes all this code, it's going to go up by one. So it'll go zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 25, and then stop. So let's do this. Let's do Daniel number, and then we'll do dollar sign i. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and save it and run it. And we'll open up the emulator just so we have something we can look at. And it says Daniel here, number 22. So it's sure enough. Um, and if we, we can take this a step further. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to do something else. So we want to loop through. Actually, we can keep that, I guess. But let's 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 invoice. Let's get rid of invoice number 22, and I want to get rid of that for now. But we want to loop through each invoice, so all 25 invoices. So how do we do that? Let's do this. Let's do uh, invoices dot for each, and then we can what we can do is we can put this code inside of there, and uh, it's messing stuff up. Testing invoice. And I'm going to get rid of that line there. So invoices are, are again a list, an array list of invoices. So we have we're going to loop through each one of them. So all 25 invoices we're going to loop through them. And if you see right there, it has invoice. It has it, which is our variable name. So we're going to do this. Dollar it's dot actually uh, dot we can do dollar it uh, it's yep dot Oh, that's right, because we're in we're in the we're inside of here. So I actually get rid of that. We can actually do it uh, if I can type here it dot first name. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run that in the emulator, and this should open up. And the and then again, the app's not going to actually display something. But if you look down at the if you look down here at the at the at the uh, log cat, you can see hey invoice Daniel one two three. It goes all the way up. So and I'm and I and it goes up to well I mess up was it did I do it right uh, I I starts at zero oh I see oh okay, here we go yeah so it does start at zero okay there so it go all the way up to there and stop at twenty four so I actually forgot that actually I think it goes anyway okay so so this is the data class if this is a little bit confusing uh, leave a comment and I may be able to help out but you see here's the invoice and this and the important thing to know is it's a data class. We can put some variables inside of there, like first name or cost, or we can even put email, and we can add an email. So if we wanted to, we could go back to here and say, hey, the email is going to be Daniel at example uh, at exa example com, and we can also access that there. So we can do email there. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and open it up in the emulator. And that didn't work. Here, let me run it one more time. I'm not sure why that's not working. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know why. Anyways, so, so what we have there is we have uh, the data class. So we have an array list of invoices. And we come down here, and we're just kind of looping through 25 times. And we're making a new invoice. We're adding it to our array list there. And then our invoices array list right here, we're going to do for each on it. And it will automatically loop through that for each of the 24, 25 times or whatever, 100 times or 1,000 times or whatever. So hopefully you learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow.